the work in other uh, areas, it's usually their choice. Uh, and we do have quite a few graduates who start their own companies. And uh, uh, that's uh, one uh, important feature in our programs. We try to encourage uh, entrepreneurship and uh, uh, innovation. So we end up having graduates who don't work for another company, but uh, for themselves in their own businesses. So some students do go on to graduate school. Um, so not everyone will seek a job right after graduation. Yeah. Um, okay, I think we'll go ahead and start here. So again, we have a, a video here and we have about 10 to seven minutes to where we will um, be able to answer any additional questions. Go ahead and use the chat um, during the video if you do have questions. Hello and welcome to the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department Visitation Day presentation. Today we have a brief overview to highlight our academic program and the extracurricular opportunities that many of our students will engage in as they further their educational experience. While the overview is being presented, we hope to be able to answer some of the questions you may have, such as, why should you study engineering at WVU? And perhaps more importantly, why should you choose mechanical or aerospace or even both majors to pursue? Our department provides numerous academic pathways for our students to attain their engineering degrees to suit their own particular academic interests. The MAE department offers both a Bachelor of Science in Aero Engineering and a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, both of which are designed as four-year programs. The MAE department also offers a dual Aero Mechanical degree program where students can attain both an Aero Engineering degree and a Mechanical Engineering degree, which typically takes the students between four and a half and five years to complete. Additionally, we offer a bachelor's to master's degree option where the students can begin taking research and particular classes towards their master's degree, even starting in their junior undergraduate year. With this approach, students can go start to finish in our program, getting both a bachelor's and master's degree in five years. There is also the traditional route for a graduate degree with master of science and PhD programs in mechanical, aerospace, and now even material science degrees. Additionally, for those students who know for sure that they want to attain their doctorate in engineering, the MAE program offers a direct track bachelor to PhD program that foregoes the need to attain a master's degree in between their bachelor's and PhD. As a department, we routinely total more than $10 million in annual research expenditures. This is really important because it provides fantastic opportunities to all of our undergraduate students so that they can work in a research laboratory where they're often engaged in impactful, state-of-the-art research activities. This is often one of the best opportunities for our students to get a chance to simultaneously work with really advanced tools and at the same time have access to highly trained mentors and co-workers as well. Even in the case where the students may not be interested at all in going to graduate school, there are still plenty of opportunities for undergraduates to work in these labs. With roughly 800 students enrolled in any given semester spanning the undergraduate and graduate student body, this gives our students roughly a 20 to 1 ratio between students and professors. There's a broad range of subjects taught in the mechanical engineering program, but also within the mechanical engineering program, students have many opportunities to get hands-on learning outside of the traditional classroom. These students can apply the knowledge that they gain in the lectures to actual projects like the SAE Baja car, SAE formula car, robotics, and the U.S. Department of Energy sponsored EcoCar program. Additional projects that are available to the mechanical engineers include things like human-powered vehicles, projects with industry, and the microgravity research team. Like the mechanical program, the aerospace program covers a fairly broad range of subjects. 
but students also have access to a lot of different opportunities outside of the typical classroom setting where they can hone their engineering skills in applied team activities. These include things like AAA's UAV Design Build Fly competition, the Experimental Rocketry Club, Microgravity Research Team, and the Rocksat X program. Aerospace students also have access to projects with industry, one of which recently was the Rooster Hall Racing Team where we investigated race car aerodynamics, and another for a local UAV manufacturer looking to develop a first of its kind rapid deploy all-weather surveillance drone for emergency first responders. Again, there are numerous student projects, clubs, and competitions to get involved with. Along with some of the ones that we've just recently highlighted, there are many other clubs and activities that can broaden your educational experience while in the MAE department. Professional societies like Society of Women Engineers, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, Society for the Advancement of Materials and Process Engineering, and the Society of Automotive Engineers introduce our students to career professionals so that they can learn what engineers do in the same types of careers that our students have chosen as their own path. Many of our students' professional societies will also routinely take field trips to various corporate and industrial sites so that our students get a behind-the-scenes look at what they might be doing in the future. There are plenty of other clubs that can help support competition events, and likewise, the college and university also sponsor numerous clubs that provide additional opportunities to our students. The student-led EcoCar Robotics and Design Build Fly teams have provided us with some neat videos of some of the most recent activities they've been up to. Let's take a look. The EcoCar Mobility Challenge is a U.S. Department of Energy four-year advanced vehicle technology competition with 11 university teams. The objective of the competition is to apply advanced propulsion systems with connected and automated vehicle technologies to improve the energy efficiency, safety, and consumer appeal of the 2019 Chevrolet Blazer to advance future mobility solutions. Students participating in this competition have a front row seat to real-world and hands-on experience in the development, process of the design, integration, and refinement of efficient mobility solutions. The mechanical and electrical engineering students engaged in this program develop skills necessary for the next generation mobility solutions to meet our nation's future energy and mobility challenges. These challenges include advanced propulsion systems, electrification, SAE level 2 automation, and vehicle connectivity to improve the energy efficiency of the blazer all while balancing factors such as emissions, safety, utility, and consumer acceptability. The students work with engineering mentors from GM and their suppliers to integrate the hardware, software, and control systems in the vehicle to meet their design objectives. The work spans from computer modeling, in-lab integration, to field testing of their design. The WU team uses the onboard sensors and wireless communications from the vehicle's surrounding environment to improve overall operation efficiency in the connected urban environment of the future. This competition concludes in the summer of 2022, and WVU is looking for another successful completion of their design. The Robotics Capstone Design Course is the design, construction, and evaluation of an autonomous robot. The design centers around space exploration where the robot will need to perform tasks with little to no human interaction. A collaborative effort with the Lane Electrical Engineering Department incorporates mechanical, electrical, electronics, and control specialties. Welcome to Almost Heaven, West Virginia. We are Mountaineer Robotics, a multidisciplinary team of undergraduates at West Virginia University. We are excited to unveil our 2020 University Rover Challenge entry, Mateo, Mountaineer Autonomous Traversal and Environmental Operations. With our past rovers as learning experiences, many of our design choices this year aim to minimize the number of moving parts on board the rover. Mateo is built with a rigid aluminum chassis and trapezoidal shell. 
Each of Mateo's 49cm tires is driven by a brushed DC motor. The tires are affixed directly to their motors by steel transmission shafts, giving Mateo an excellent skid steering system. For power, Mateo uses three 40 volt batteries as well as two 12 volt batteries. Power to the entire system can be stopped at once by depressing the emergency stop button. For the science mission, we are reusing the lift system from our equipment servicing arm. The vertical lift deploys a linear actuated scoop into the soil, which is collected in a rotating carousel beneath the rover. The soil is first observed through a microscope, then immediately tested for temperature and moisture to determine if simple organisms could survive. The sample's pH level is also tested, as pH is a strong indicator of soil habitability. Acetic acid is then added to the sample, which is monitored by a real-time CO2 sensor. If carbonates are present in the sample, the base station will observe a sharp increase in carbon dioxide emissions, indicating that neutral to alkaline water, favorable to life, was present. For large rocks, inspection under webcam and microscope can show colors, layers, and other features that could help identify minerals present in the sample. If gypsum or halide is found, UV light may reveal the presence of organic materials within the mineral. Mateo is programmed primarily with C++ and Python, running on Ubuntu and ROS. Individual services, such as sensors and cameras, run on their own ROS nodes. During the autonomy mission, an operator inputs a GPS coordinate and its uncertainty into the base station computer. Mountaineer Robotics is excited to unveil the progress we've made on Mateo, and we hope country roads take us home to the Mars Desert Research Station in May. For students interested in unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs, there's no better way to get a hands-on feel for it than to join the WVU Design, Build, Fly, or DBF team. Each year, a unique mission is given to students early in the fall, and then the student teams make an RC aircraft to respond to the mission. Last year's mission was a banner-towing bush plane that had to take off in 20 feet and carry a large banner with the supporting school's name and logo. The bigger the banner, the more points the team would rack up. This year's mission is a UAV that can deploy and recover a sensor suite mid-flight with a sensor carrying programmable lights that can be seen from the ground. The heavier the sensor and the more laps the plane can make in 10 minutes, the more points the team can get. The UAV Design Build Fly competition course offers aerospace engineering students a chance to actually build an aircraft of their very own in team format which will necessarily involve some amount of prototype testing along the way. Sometimes that doesn't work so well. But when the plane finally gets built and is ready to achieve the type of mission that you're after, it's really a great feeling. Of course, the team always breathes a sigh of relief when that first takeoff is ensured during the maiden flight and that it demonstrates adequate stability and control. The uh, teams are broken up into various subgroups, propulsion, sensors group, aerodynamics, structures, CAD, and mission analysis. Of course, you can't take for granted that uh, safe landing is always ensured, and it's always nice to see when it does land safely. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way, though. Regardless of the situation, eventually you will have a working prototype that does well, and we're able to go ahead on out to competition in April. We have a great time, regardless of where we fall in line with all the rest of the teams, and we always enjoy our trip and get to go see other sites along the way. Entry into the competition does require a successful proposal, and for times in the past when we've not been able to do it, we can still use our own airport to fly and hold actual competitions with other universities. There's just nothing quite like seeing your own UAV design fly over the beautiful hills of West Virginia. All of our hands-on projects will culminate in some kind of competition against other universities. Most of that work is done by the students and includes everything from machining and welding to computer coding to fiberglass or other composite layup and lots and lots of testing of subsystems along the way. Many of these competitions will include top-notch universities from around the world, from North America, South America, Europe, and Asia. And it's probably one of the most powerful experiences that our students will get to have as they see how their design stacks up against some of the best competitors out there. And this is really the ultimate learning, where the team sees that as they come together and work as a team, they can overcome any number of engineering obstacles along the way. And this helps boost confidence and occasionally 
provides a little dose of humility when they see how other teams have also risen to the challenge and brought to the table some really cool idea. The fact that the MAE department is recognized as a program of excellence is due in no small part to the myriad successes of our students. Nearly 100 scholarships as well as numerous undergraduate research fellowships are awarded to our students from a wide range of funding sources. You do need to be proactive to seek these out as they can help help offset your educational costs or provide you with funding to do your own research. It's also important to recognize that while the individual scholarship or fellowship may be temporary, really, the ultimate effect of engaging in directed learning and research in a particular area very often leads to increased opportunities for career advancements in the future or more rapid access to full-time employment opportunities that are ready and waiting for you when you graduate. Almost all of our faculty, as well as their postdocs and graduate students in the labs, are incredibly active in funded research that's focused in areas such as robotics, materials, unmanned aerial vehicles, alternative fuels, defense, spaceflight, and modeling and simulation. Very often faculty will bring their research right into the lectures so that they can let students know where we are in the state of the art and also show how those often fundamental concepts that are being discussed and taught in the classroom are utilized in novel ways to develop these brand new technologies. There are undergraduate paid positions that are usually in no short supply to help support that effort and give students a chance to work in cutting edge research. Another aspect of the MAE department that makes it a program of excellence is related to our, our faculty and the success that they have. So not only do we have great students, but we have great faculty. Many of those faculty are consistently recognized either locally by the department, the college or the university, perhaps regionally in state recognized awards, or even nationally and internationally for their efforts and effectiveness as dedicated engineers, teachers, researchers, and advisors. Now, having so many talented faculty in our department is in part a result of the encouragement and support they receive directly from the department. But of course, it's also important to note that the quality of our students and the impact that they make working in the labs and engaging with faculty in the classroom certainly has a lot to do with the continued recognition that our faculty receive as well. Another great aspect that our graduates can look forward to is the sheer diversity in job opportunities, both in terms of geography and the type of industry that you can get involved with. More than 200 companies routinely show up to our numerous career fairs that we put on throughout the year where they will aggressively recruit our graduates. Career locations for mechanical engineers is pretty much about anywhere. Mechanical engineering is a very diverse discipline and mechanical engineers consequently are found in just about every industrial sector. Anything to do with manufacturing, energy, buildings, HVAC, or testing may involve a mechanical engineer. Now while aerospace engineering may at first seem to be kind of limited to mostly aviation and space industries, there are many other related sectors where aerospace engineers may end up working. The more obvious of these include areas like national defense, systems, general guidance, navigation, and controls, and instrumentation. But it's also not uncommon for aerospace engineers to find themselves working in less obviously related fields, such as security and even biomedical. But again, a diverse, broad range of opportunities abound, no matter what your degree coming through our program. Now, aside from the academic and the research opportunities that truly abound for our students, to top everything off, WVU is just a great place to go to school. In terms of location, Morgantown and the Morgantown campuses are repeatedly recognized by others as safe, friendly, fun places to be. And in terms of people, you just can't find friendlier folks. Our folks here in Morgantown really make people feel at home. Our students are some of the best students in the world, and they come together as a wonderful, tight-knit community where these bonds that get formed in the classrooms and the other competitions and other events really last a lifetime. No doubt it seems rough to our students at the time, 
but pulling those lab all-nighters, getting ready for competition, the long, drawn-out competition trips, those are the kind of things that will bring a smile to the face of most of our alumni and some funny stories along the way. And you know, walking to the podium to an accept an award on behalf of WVU, on behalf of your team, really on behalf of your own hometown and your family, those are the kind of things that will instill in you a lifetime of interest and true enjoyment in engineering. And that's ultimately what we hope to offer all of our students. So on behalf of the entire MAE department community, we just want to take this opportunity now to thank you all for your attention, your time, and your interest in our department. If you have any questions after you leave, please feel free to contact our department chairman, Dr. Jackie Pruch, if you have any questions about department operation, or if you have questions about academics, please feel free to contact Dr. Andrew Rhodes. Hopefully, in the coming months, COVID-19 restrictions will be lifted, and you'll all get a chance to actually come in person and visit and see some of the projects going on, talk to some of the students in our program about their experiences. Thank you once again, and we wish all of you the very best of luck as you graduate high school and begin new and exciting chapters in your life. So hopefully you were able to get a taste for our um, program and the opportunities. Are there any questions there um, that you have about our program? Was anybody interested in any particular project, maybe eco car or building a model airplane for the DBF club, perhaps experimental rocketry, robotics. Anybody have interest in any of those projects? Dr. Browning is actually out in Kansas with the rocketry club um, where they're gonna go and do a flight here, hopefully today or tomorrow, um, where the rocket is hopefully gonna go to 30,000 feet and win the first prize. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we have um, uh, 17 students in our in our uh, just in our uh, entourage here out in Kansas right now. Um, but we have plenty more in our club, um, and uh, so we have probably two or three freshmen in our crew, all the way up to seniors, um, and uh, lots of stuff going on. We have I'm with the uh, crew that's working on the payload right now back at the at the hotel. And our forward team is out um, kind of checking out the launch site right now and making sure the winds are okay. So we either launch today or tomorrow, but again, as uh, Dr. Thompson said, we'll go to 30,000 feet. I do wanna point out that uh, this is uh, definitely one of these situations where the where our club loves, all of our club members love to mentor the students coming in and that we also have involved in this club, lots of, it it's, it's, uh, sort of spawns off lots of paid research opportunities through uh, the NASA Space Grant Office. So at least four or five of the students that are currently um, in the club are, are now getting one or $5,000 grants to, to do research and that's money in their pocket to do that research. But um, they make those rocket, they make the rocket themselves mix up the solid rocket motor and all that. And that thing goes up to 30,000 feet is pretty amazing. Kind of neat that we have to come out to a place where we need to get an FAA waiver to actually shoot a rocket that high into the, into the uh, atmosphere. But this is the kind of thing that really when you're in the classroom learning, it's one thing. And then when you get involved in these hands-on experiences like this, where you're on the road and then out in the field, it really, really solidifies what you've learned in class. So awesome opportunities. And again, we were, we were uh, fortunate to have the opportunity to come out, uh, even though the actual competition was, uh, was canceled this year because of COVID, we were able to still come out and test fire a rocket, so. So Connor had a question about um, chemistry or physics, and it looks like Dr. Rhodes answered that. So it, it certainly um, depends, but much of mechanical and aerospace engineering is based in physics. So you certainly know, need to know physics for the fundamentals in, in mechanical and aerospace. Um, with inside of our program, we have material science, so if you go into material science or combustion, or as Dr. Browning said, if you go and make your rocket motors, certainly the chemistry is gonna become very important. So in general, I would say physics is um, number one, 
but depending on what you do, chemistry could also um, be equivalent to the physics content. Um, let's see, there's also a question from Mariah about um, how much time. So your time commitment to these clubs is really based on what you want to do. Um, so you could certainly spend an hour a week or you could spend um, maybe 60 or 70 hours like this weekend, um, this, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday with the Rocketry Club. So, you know, it, it's really up to you how much time you spend. And then when do the clubs normally start? Um, they're, they're typically run um, fall and spring, but there is some activity that does occur over the summer. So within our curriculum, as I said, the co-ops and internships, um, if you do a co-op or internship in the fall or spring, you may end up here in the summer to, to stay on track. Um, so you could do some work over the summertime with like the NASA Space Grant Consortium where you may do some research over the summer. So it, it varies. Yeah, and then, and then the clubs actually begin meeting, like the Rocketry Club or, or even our Outdoor Adventure Club. Um, usually in the fall, we'll start, you know, we'll start meeting maybe the fourth week by, by no later than the fourth week of the beginning of the semester. So, so and you can get in clubs, you, anybody can get in on, so. So EcoCar is a um, class project. Um, it, it is... Um, run really sophomore, junior, senior year. So you can get um, educational credit towards graduation starting in your sophomore year. And that includes um, not only mechanical students, but also electrical engineering students. So even if you don't come into mechanical and you go to say electrical, you could still participate. You guys have much better questions than the first group, so you guys are doing great. Keep them coming. So one of the aspects is that we want you to have that hands-on experience because it really reinforces the, the, um, the concepts. So that is our strength of our program is the hands-on work that we do. Yeah, and I'll, I'll also add for our, so for example, we, we do a lot of DOD work um, in, in my project team and, uh, or my research team. And so we routinely, I think we maybe have half a dozen undergraduate uh, paid researchers on our, on our Navy project. We have basically a direct pipeline with many of our, uh, with many of our sponsors where the students, once they're done doing the research and they they get their graduate degree or they get their uh, undergraduate degree, they go off and get a job right away. And they end up on the other side of the fence, but still working in the same in the same on the same project. Um, so it's it's actually a really kind of unique and uh, interesting and, and fun kind of way to see your students uh, continue to grow after they after they've graduated. So um, it's a great way to get get exactly piped into a job way before you graduate. So Nathan just posted his email. Nathan is a, a mechanical engineering student. Um, so he is certainly one that can give you kind of the ins and outs and the, the secrets of what it takes to be an engineering student. So please do not hesitate to um, reach out to him. We also offer attractive uh, study abroad opportunities. Uh, we have uh, close uh, relationships with universities in Mexico and especially in Italy. Uh, and one unique feature of our co-op program is that you can earn credit towards your degree uh, when you engage in a co-op experience, um, provided that you, know, you meet certain conditions. But uh, this way, we make sure that by engaging in co-op, you don't lose much time towards uh, graduation. Okay. Any other questions? So you guys did great. Thank you for your questions. I think we'll go ahead and finish up here. Again, if you have questions after um, we finish here, you have Nathan's email and then you have Dr. Rhodes and Pruch's contact information. 
So thank you for attending. Hope Thanks, everyone. See thank you in you. the fall here. All good, Nathan? You can go ahead and stop this one and start a new one. Mm -hmm.